Hey, what up everybody? This is Mike Knox coming to you with the WrestleMania Q&A Part 2 off of the uh, Stevie Breach uh, Facebook page. This is going to be going to be coming to you with a 15 minute time limit and we are going to be answering questions that people left for me and uh, if you enjoyed this and you didn't see yesterday's Q&A, make sure you go check this out. Um, but we're going to be going for 15 minutes and we'll knock out as many of these questions as we can. Thank you very much for everybody who left me questions here for you. We're going to be going with the uh, number one question. Are you going to WrestleMania 32? I'm not, but really want to meet you and the click. Well, Pinko, there's always next year. Save up your dollars, get back into the movie theater, start ripping those tickets, selling those nachos, and filling up that Coke machine, and uh, you will make enough money to go to WrestleMania 33 in Minnesota. Uh, 32 is a go. Uh, we're going to be um, you know, heading on out uh, to Dallas in, I think it's April this year. It was weird last year having it in March, wasn't it? But um, always, always a fun time hanging out with the Click Brothers and... Uh, I'm sure that you'll get to meet us someday. Uh, next question is, can you get me an autograph of The Rock? He's the greatest. All right, here we go. I get this question a lot. People leave me comments on videos that I make about access. Can I get an autograph from Dolph Ziggler? Can I get an autograph of Rey Mysterio? Here's how the deal goes. When you go to access and you get in line, sometimes there's lines when it's only a photograph line and they have, they have like a backdrop and they're going to make it look like you and Sin Cara are on the cover of WWE Magazine. Most of the lines are autograph lines and sometimes if the guys are dicks, you don't even get a picture with that person. But basically, when you go to access, you're guaranteed to get one autograph and very few times you're able to play it slick and you're able to get a second, but the chances are very small. I mean, uh, Miguel uh, took advantage of John Cena. Um, he got Cena to sign, like, I think he got four things when he met Cena. Uh, when we met Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan honestly signed everything that we put in front of him. Um, Jack Swagger at my first um, SummerSlam access, I think, was so marveled uh, by the fact that I had his shirt on um, that he signed uh, two things for me. And then Triple H, when I met him, I think he signed my second item, not because he wanted to, because mostly because he just wanted to get the line moving and get me out of his way, because he signed one item, I talked to him, and then I said, oh, here, and then I put down the second item, and he looked at me like, what are you doing? And I looked at him like, oh man, it's going to be great to have your autograph, thank you very much, and he just just signed it and um you know that that's how you do it but there's no way in the world honestly i love you guys i thank you guys for watching my uh, my youtube videos but uh when it comes down to it um you're only guaranteed to get one autograph and um you know i like my getting my encyclopedia signed or other various things and uh I need it. Most of the time, I won't even get in that person's line if I don't need their autograph, but uh, it is what it is sometimes. What is your favorite WrestleMania moment that you attended live and why? Um, please shout out my YouTube is 1990Hardy1, and my Twitter is at 1990Hardy1. Make sure you guys go check those out. But uh, from all the WrestleManias that I ever attended, um, the, my, my greatest WrestleMania moment will be WrestleMania 30 when the man, I don't know why I'm grabbing the computer when I can just grab my phone, Daniel Bryan won uh, two matches um, in, to end up becoming WWE World Heavyweight Champion. He beat Triple H in the opener. Um, that was almost like the main event because when he won that match, to me, it almost guaranteed that he was going to win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Um, honestly... I think everybody knew going into that day that he was going uh, to win both of those matches, but it just, he is the ultimate underdog, so you never knew it until you really believed it, but when Brian won the main event, and they started shooting out the confetti, I go gave Justin a big, huge hug, and then I turned and I gave Miguel uh, another big, huge hug, and... I was loving every minute. I was caught up in that. That that is a moment that I was so glad that I was a part of. And uh, I don't. I I, I mean, if, if I didn't think anything was ever going to top it, I would stop going. But um, I I honestly don't know if anything will ever top that moment. Um, out of everyone you've met at Access, who's been your favorite? And if you would please give a shout out to at Ethan Nank four twenty one. 
E T H A N K four two one. Make sure you check out the description box below if um I screw that up too much. But thank you, Ethan, for your question. My favorite person that I've ever met at Access with a VIP um, would have to be Hulk Hogan. I've never had a moment like that. I even talked about it in part one of the Q&A. But um, as far as meeting normal people, um, uh, I, I don't think I had more fun than last year than when I went through the NXT line. Uh, the NXT line, honestly, has gotten longer. Um, honestly, if you went to SummerSlam 2013, I believe that was the trip that Justin went on. Um, you could go through the NXT line and nobody was even in the line. You could meet the NXT wrestlers and m most of the time wait only about five minutes. I mean, Miguel and Justin talk about going and meeting Paige and waiting in line behind, I think they say like 10 or maybe 15 people at the most. Um, it just... Either nobody knew that they were there, or nobody cared. Um, but last year at WrestleMania, the line was a little bit longer. But um, my thing to do with the VIPs is don't go to their thing first. Go to who you think is going to be the best line to be in. Because when you have a VIP ticket or a premium VIP ticket, you get in before everybody else at Access. So you go to that line and you, you go through it. Maybe even after that line, you go to a secondary line, meet that person, knowing that the VIP is guaranteed to be there for, I believe, two hours, then go over there. So I think what I did last year is I went and met two people. I can't remember exactly who those people were, but I met those, and then I ran in uh, to the NXT line. I got through them. I got to meet Kevin Owens. I got to meet um, Blake and Murphy. And then I got to meet Dana Brooke. Then I went over to the Ric Flair line. There was only like five people left in line because it was, it, was, it was the dead last. And then I went back to the NXT line where I met Kevin Owens again. I met um, Baron Corbin and uh, I think it was, oh, Sasha Banks. Uh, I met all of them within like minutes. And uh, that, that was probably the best experience. Those NXT pe people, uh, they really do love the fact that you're there. I had a great conversation with Blake and Murphy, talking to them about the future of tag team wrestling and um, talking to them about, uh, you know, 80s wrestling. Um, and then we just named off our favorite, favorite 80s uh, matches, like the Rockers versus the Orient Express, which got a bigger pop than I thought it was going to when I mentioned that. And then talking about the Orient Express, and even though they didn't win a lot of matches. They had a lot of great ones. Um, this is uh, from Vitor Lopez. I'm leaving my country for the first time to just to go to WrestleMania 32. I'm doing the travel package, and I'm pretty damn sure that never in my entire life I'll be spending more money than I have to spend on this trip. Can you please call me crazy now? Would you do such a thing if you lived in another country? At Vitor Lopez 27. Big, pan, big fan from Brazil. Honestly, you guys that come from other countries are what make WrestleMania. Would I ever travel out of this country to go to WrestleMania? No. There's no way in the world I would do it. Honestly, airfare is the one thing that would kill it more than anything else. I think that's why a lot of the people that come over from Europe um, get a lot of credit um, for um, for doing that. You know, people come from Japan, uh, S Switzerland. Um, I, I think I've met people from almost all over the world, and I just tell them that, honestly, they're crazy. There's no way in the world that I would do it, but you know, you got to tip your hat to them. I talk about the fact that when I sit in my seat at WrestleMania, and I look up at the top deck, and I say, that's probably that guy's probably one of the biggest wrestling fans in the whole place. That's the same way that I feel about you guys, so I hope that your trip comes off all right, and I hope I get to meet you and um, talk about you know all the hotties in Brazil at WrestleMania this year. Um, uh, there's Randy J. Pena. What's better, travel packages or buying everything separate? Honestly, if you want to deal with less stress and having to remember what day is a pre-sale, finding a pre-sale code, waiting in line at Ticketmaster, um, you know, trying to make sure that you're not throwing back a good pair of seats and um, you know, taking your risk on getting um, uh, something that's not as good, um, just do the travel package. WWE is going to set you up. They're going to take care of you. And uh, I think that's a good spot to be in. Uh, shout out to the Beast Conqueror 32. Um, uh, Lucinda Perez. This is who I met at WrestleMania 26, right? I'm pretty sure that I met Lucy at WrestleMania 26. Um, I used to follow, or I guess I still do 
uh, follow her Twitter. Uh, she used to have a really good blog, and I don't know what's happened with that. But uh, Lucinda, if you're out there, update your blog. Uh, what are your best tips for scheduling the events you're attending during WrestleMania weekend? How do you get everything you want when there's so much to do? Um, I think that, honestly, when I opened this notebook to take notes for UFC, they were in here. And um, honestly, as you start to plan your trip, you just write down what day things are going down. And I know that I've done math on the back page in a Sharpie, so it's it's hard to keep track. I think everything in this notebook for the first few pages has to do with it. And it just basically says the day. It says, you know, where we're going. This was when, when Justin and Miguel were going to go to the Evolve show. Uh, Miguel ended up going to um, Hall of Fame that day, so this, this isn't even 100% sure. And then Ravi and me were going to go to Access. Uh, and then, oh, this is WrestleMania 30 because it says Bourbon Street. I ended up not even going to Access. I ended up hanging out with them. This is a really, really old one. Um, and then basically, um, it just you just list where you want to be, and uh, then you just check out the time and see if you're going to be there. Every year, you have to sort of um, juggle between what you're going to. Um, I even have lists of who I want to meet at WrestleCon and what day to make sure that you sort of don't waste your time meeting somebody on Saturday when you know that you can meet them on Sunday as well. And I guess that's when the notes meet. But basically, it just takes pen and paper and trying to figure out what you can do um, with everything that's going down. Um, Paul asks, is Thursday Access the best session of Access? Honestly, in my opinion, I've had good luck with Thursday. Uh, I know that last year was the first Thursday Access that I went to. At WrestleMania 30, I ended up going to the Jim Ross show, which wasn't as good as I was hoping that it was going to be. I did get to meet Jim Ross because of the Wrestling Observer subscription that I have and Court Bauer hooking us up. But... Um, Honestly, Ravi and the Boston Brothers both came back from Access, and they were pumped about the fact that the, you know, a lot of the travel package people, they fly in on Friday, so they're not even in town. So most of the time, it's just hardcore wrestling fans that get there a day early, um, and then also there's, uh, um, you know, locals um, that go to it, but... One thing or another, you get in a lot of lines at Access, and you're able to fly through it. So uh, Thursday Access always uh, works out. Um, Kyle Carpenter um, says, Who would you recommend to meet at Access? At Belfast WWE. Honestly, just meet your favorite wrestlers. I mean, some people like to meet the Divas. I mean, there's a lot of time when the Divas have the longest line. Maybe if you're lucky, you're able to get a VIP or a premium VIP and knock out one of your favorite wrestlers that's on your list that you've never been able to meet. Um, but I just like to meet the people that, honestly, that I really like to care about. Um, Jack Swagger, Dolph Ziggler. Um, sometimes there's just, um, you know, like three-man band was one of the things. Uh, also, the Funkadactyls were two of the people that were the highest on my list to meet at the WrestleMania 30 Access. Just because they were people that I cared about, and I wanted to get a picture with them so I could, you know, boast on Twitter that I met this person. Um, from there, we go to Bre uh, Brendan McNeesey. McKenzie, um, I just wanted to know if there's anyone you regret you do not meet at WrestleMania Access. My YouTube is Mr. Hollywood 52485. This story comes from SummerSlam Access, and basically, we were in line to meet Big E and AJ Lee. And basically, because Jack Swagger and Cesaro came out, and me being a big Jack Swagger mark, I ended up getting out of my line, getting into the Jack Swagger line, and then one thing leads to another. My friends who were in the front of the Big E line uh, got to meet Big E, got to meet AJ Lee. Meeting AJ Lee is probably something that I will never be able to do. I have been able to meet Big E a few times since then, uh, but uh, they were able to get out of their line, then come over to the Jack Swagger line, and they were able to do both, and I was only able to do one because I cared about meeting Jack Swagger so much. So honestly, when it comes down to it, not meeting AJ Lee is probably going to be one of, one of my biggest regrets. And we we still got more questions. We still got more comments. You can still go over to the thread if you have not uh, got your question answered on the Stevie Breach Stevie Breach Facebook page, and uh, I will answer your questions in Volume Three, more than likely coming tomorrow. So thank you, everybody. See you at Click Thirty Two if you're able to come. Travel packages on Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern.